Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. In today's video, I want to take you with me again into my brand new vegetable garden. Last time we planted some cabbages, we we're sowing some salad crops, prepare the soil, and today I want to focus on some fruits for your vegetable garden. I came across a really interesting variety of raspberries in the garden center and also some wonderful strawberries. So how I want to structure today's video is, first of all, I want to tour you around this area again, show you what I did in the meantime, and then plant those plants together with you give you some information about it so maybe to inspire you to get just the same variety for your own garden so hope you are excited to join me in my garden today again this is my brand new vegetable garden area. It is really a quite good, decent size, I have to say. I covered everything with straw and with all the cuttings from a perennial. So even the straw is from all of my ornamental grasses. And then I put raised beds on top of there. I already started planting a little bit with you. So in the back, there are the cabbage plants growing under the really nice mesh. But if this is the first time you ever see a video from my account, if you swing to the left, you see some farming supplies. So this is from the neighbors. They run a farm here and this is the farmland so if I continue swinging you see that the landscape really opens up down here we are at the bottom of a dike so the upper garden is on top of the dike and then the back really is at the base of it it is quite a different climate already which sounds a little funny but even today on top of the dike it's a little windy it's a little unpleasant in a way and down here immediately it feels warm and it feels nicer and I feel that this is why it is just the ideal area to really grow some fruit and vegetables here it's completely southwest facing which means that the entire area is sun filled and this is what most of fruit and vegetables really require so the first thing that you will see here are some strawberries and I want to put them in a raised bed. So how these raised beds works, and I think that this is a really smart idea, is that they're very easy to set up and then you can buy these made to measure plastic bags that go inside and then you can just fill them with a lovely potting mix. This is especially for fruit growing in your garden. So I feel that the strawberries are very happy in here. It's rich, it's very lofty, lovely, crumbly. So it looks fantastic. What you can tell as well is there's some footprints in here. So the cat definitely walked over here. So once these strawberries are planted, I will definitely cover them with straw. Well, not cover the leaves, but around it. You can tell they already start producing the first uh, flower buds here. So I'm really expecting some wonderful fruit out of them. This is a variety called San Andreas and once I plant them I give you all the information about it, why I'm so excited that I really got my hand on some of these plants here in the garden center. The other raised beds, nothing really happened. There's some herbs sitting that I want to plant in one video but this happens bit by bit. Then towards the back here, there is a dead hatch. And what I still wanna do is I wanna set up a framework and plant some espalier fruit, which I'm gonna to train to espalier. And I think I wanna put sweet cherries there. I really thought about it, what to do, but I kind of feel now really working more and more in this area. This is the one thing that I really would love to have here. So it's two sweet cherries growing as espalier, but I have an elder here and underneath there is a lovely space which is also warm and sun filled, very protected. And I wanna put two raspberries here. So Melina, that is a Polish word for raspberry. And then Black Jewel, that is a variety name. I feel that the photo has been a little photoshopped to be honest, but they are supposed to be very dark, almost like blackberries. A very interesting summer fruiting variety. In the upper kitchen garden, I have autumn fruiting raspberries. So nice to have some summer fruiting to extend the season. What I already did in the area Area here is I prepare the soil so I just removed the native very very sandy soil and then I came in again with the same potting mix that is in the raised bed for the strawberries dug under some of my homegrown compost to really enrich the entire soil and then when we planted I'm also going to give them a good handful of organic bone chips and I think the raspberries are the first thing that we're going to plant together today. If you want to start your own fruit and vegetable garden, definitely choose an area that is sun filled in your garden, like southwest facing, such as I have it here. What is definitely really good here is how protected and sheltered this area is. Not only is a dead hedge here and on that side, there's a wattle fence in your back and there is a dike in my back. So the wind coming from north and east, which is normally the cold wind, doesn't really hit this area here. So I think that this is really perfect and ideal for any kind of fruit and 
vegetable production in my garden and definitely fantastic for these raspberries. So whenever you plant raspberries, there is one thing that is quite important that you have to know if you want to harvest, to know how to prune your raspberries because depending on if you have summer fruiting or autumn fruiting, you prune them different. I shared a video roughly one and a half years ago on how to prune autumn fruiting raspberries that I grow in the upper garden. There it is very simple because with autumn fruiting raspberries what you do is after you harvest the last raspberry you cut them all back to the ground then they come back in spring and they produce a fruit on the fresh growth. While summer fruiting raspberries such as this variety here they will produce fruit on the growth from last year so on the two-year-old branches which means that all these tiny buds that are appearing here that I see here will grow will look fantastic but they're not going to produce a single fruit this year so probably I will only harvest next year which is a little sad but I mean if you garden you're always planning ahead and it's not really bad. What you cut back though is all those branches that have fruited so when you harvested your raspberries then you cut those back but don't touch the fresh ones that haven't fruited because those are the ones that will produce fruit for next year. This variety here produces the fruit for summer fruiting variety pretty late apparently so main production is in about um, July and late August time which is definitely a later variety. So if I tip it out of its container it has a really nice root system it's not pot bound there are always these big fleshy roots so you want to make sure that if possible you kind of loosen them out of this tangle a little bit so that they can grow outwards because raspberries they produce shallow roots which means they do not send a leader down into the ground they will just root outwards which this variety definitely will do. So I have a couple of nice big fleshy roots here I've untangled them and they look fantastic. I already see one, two, three, four buds appearing here. They look really nice and um, this flimsy stem from last year which I think tries to flower but I'm not really sure if it's going to flower. The flowers will be white and the fruit will be very very dark almost black kind of you can apparently uh, take them for blackberries almost but they are supposed to have a really nice sweet aroma. They flower very long which is also good for wildlife because they are open flowers and they can grow to quite a substantial height in between 1 meter 50 up to 2 meters if the conditions are right. So I'm going to give you updates to see how it goes. Since I have prepared the soil here I don't really need to do a lot. I don't even need a shovel because everything is light and lofty and wonderful. I just come in with some nice organic bone chips now dig them under because by microbes they will break down to nitrogen and feed your plants and this is always a good starting point for your plants. So just get it in here and then push it in, plant at that level exactly to how it came in the container because this is how it was thriving and how the plant is happy. And now I'm just going to push back a little bit of the straw around it to make sure that the weeds cannot grow in and then I will also water it thoroughly to make sure that it has a nice good soak so it can really thrive in here. So now I'm just going to plant the second one and then we focus on some really lovely strawberries. Strawberries were definitely the favorite fruit of my childhood and I think they pretty much still are just because of the fantastic aroma and all the ways where you can use them. You can make jam out of them, you can put them on a cake or if you just go into the garden on a hot summer's day and pick them fresh, still warm, nothing beats the taste of fresh strawberries off the plant. I remember my parents, they had a quite big patch of strawberries in their own garden and I loved them as a kid. But the problem is that back then you had varieties that produced fruit for a month, at most six weeks, and then that was it. Then you just had a big patch of strawberries just growing outwards and everywhere. And at one point you started just weeding them basically. <laughs> But these varieties like San Andreas they're endless summer which means that they keep on producing fruit throughout the entire summer season. So May, June here definitely June because it always takes a while for the temperatures to really rise and then all the way through the summer into autumn according to some sources even up until the first frost. I'm going to give you an update on how good they are. The thing on why I feel strawberries are going to taste very well here and I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. In Europe if you have strawberries in your garden or if you buy strawberries they are better the further north you are. So Scandinavia for example Sweden is quite popular for having fantastic strawberries and this has to do with the light situation in Scandinavia. In the summer month and especially in June when they arrive in the dates are 
antlers, which means that these fruit, they receive a lot of sunlight, so the sugar level is rising in the fruit and that makes them extremely sweet. And since I'm pretty far north here, I think that I will definitely be quite successful with my strawberries too. So as I always tell you, when you buy something in the garden center, tip the plant over and check it out. It looks really good. It has a wonderful root system. Nothing is pot bound. And here pot bound always means that the roots are growing round and round. And if you hold it like this in your hand, the soil does not crumble apart. So the roots are holding all the soil together, which is fantastic. And I haven't watered them. So even them being a little bit on the drier side now, they still really lovely fantastic root system don't have to do a thing all I need to do now and this is wonderful if you plant in a raised bed and especially with fresh soil it's lofty it's nice it's wonderful so I don't need to have a shovel I don't even need to wear gloves because it is so lovely and clean so I just make a nice good size hole come in with some organic bone chips mix them under put the plant in dead level as always you don't want to bury it firm it in and I said I don't want to bury it, so I really need to make sure when I firm it in that it stays level. And this is pretty much what I'm going to do. I plant them here in a chevron, so there's like three and two, so one, two, three. And then in between the gap of these two, there is a third one. So it's like three, two, three, two. And then I still have almost the second half of the raised bed. Well, I try to get my hand on another variety of um, endless summer strawberries. I also found a source online, so if I don't get anything here in the garden centers, I'm definitely going to order some of those online. So what I will do now is plant my way through here and put them all into the ground. Then I will water them in thoroughly because this is very fresh soil and it is pretty dry, as you can tell. And then I'm going to cover all of the uh, strawberries with straw, or like not the strawberries, but around it. And the reason for it is, well, number one, in a raised bed like this, it's quite nice because when the cat comes and pays a visit, when there's straw on top of it, it's not so advertising that the cat is going to leave a little present in here. And the second reason is when the strawberries produce their fruit, these fruit are lying very nice and clean on the straw. And then you can just harvest them and eat them straight away. You don't need to wash them because there is no soil on it. And it's also very easy to see and identify the strawberries. And so I'm very happy, very pleased. This is what I'm going to do now. And then I'm excited to show you how it looks when it's all finished. It looks kind of funny with a straw cover on the raised bed, now with the raised bed sitting on a big straw cover. So it's kind of just like the illusion of like, yeah, there is a raised bed. Everything is the same color. But I really think that the straw is going to be good also for the cats. And it is a layer of mulch. And mulching something is always a good idea because what mulch generally does is it keeps the moisture in the ground because it is not an open surface of soil. So after a good, nice rain shower, the moisture is supposed to stay in here pretty long. Those strawberries, don't they look fantastic? So vigorous. Some of them, they really have a lot and a lot of shoots coming from the base of the plant. Can't wait. Here, I definitely know that I'm going to harvest some really lovely fruit already this year. Not sure if I've ever really shown you, but I also planted two black currants here as a standard, like facing the back, because I feel like, oh, that is good. They are going to cover up the dead hat. They're going to make it look and seem a little nicer. And then it is just a lovely vacant space where I could have a little more fruit production in this area here. And then the raspberries. Well, by magic, they just disappear as always because they're just so small still. I mean, they came with this flimsy stem, but all the goodness really is here at the base of the plant. So if I just show you, can you see all these red buds here this is where the fresh growth is appearing so a lot and a lot of lovely fresh stems are on the way and I think what I'm going to do here is underplant the elder with a clematis because just imagine how beautiful it is if you're gardening here and then you have these really wonderful clematis blooms in this area 
I think I'm gonna go for a little trip to the garden center. You guys, that is it for today's video. All I can say now is thank you so much for watching today's video. I can't wait to give you update to us on how the raspberries are hopefully growing, how the strawberries are hopefully fruitening and how we can harvest in this area. But more to come of this area and obviously from all different parts of the garden, especially in my back, the brand new border in a way where I intend on planting a lot of different fun and exciting things together with you. So thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you if you decide to give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more from my garden, you can always visit my Instagram account. The link to that is just down below this video. And I'd love to welcome you next time around. Take care guys, bye.